What's up everybody, the fun has officially begun because right about now we're gonna check out some microbrewed beers in Tokyo, Japan. So you voted on my next chow destination and damn near 50% of you chose the Bard Beer Tap Room. Seemed like a pretty wise decision to me. So I headed on over to Harajuku, Tokyo, boosted on past some buck wild promotional buses and cruised on over to Bard Beer. Now they got some pretty sick ass signage outside this place. I don't exactly know what this painting is, I guess it must be some kind of eastern thing. Anyway, I met up with two badass subscribers, we crawled on up the stairs to Bard Beer and got mentally prepared for the microbrewed beer fiesta to ensue. Now once we busted into this place, we started taking stock of all the top-notch artworks that were adorning the walls. I mean, I ain't no art aficionado, but even for me, it's plain to see that's some nice fucking artwork right there. Hell, those beer taps ain't half bad either. This bar feels all warm and inviting like, and wow, just wow, what do we have here? That's a nice beer magazine right there. A real nice beer magazine. I guess I've been drinking beer wrong all this time. Anyway, we started taking a look at this beer menu and realized there was all kinds of craft beers on this menu, all different kinds. Now I didn't want to overanalyze this shit, so I figured I'd get a beer I already knew. I decided to get the Rising Sun Pale Ale. So we ordered our beers from the beer maestro. Our beers arrived, and right about now I was feeling frisky as fuck. So I went right to it, grabbed that glass, and started slamming back some sips. It seemed to me like this beer had some complexity to it. I tasted me some nuttiness, some citrus flavors, some hoppy aftertaste, and notes of Buck Wild. Weighing the pros and cons, I'd have to say that's a nice fucking beer. Anyway, I figured I needed some chow to go along with these beers, so I ordered me some yakitori, aka grilled meat sticks. Now if you want to eat this meat like a wild barbarian, then just bite it directly off the stick, but if you want to be civilized, then pull it off the stick with your chopsticks. I mean, it may look easy, but let me tell you this, baby cakes, there's a lot of technique involved with this. A real lot of technique. See the trouble I just had there? I should be twisting that skewer with my left hand while I pull that shit down. If you don't twist that stick, you're liable to have that whole damn mass of meat fly down and splash meat juice all over the place. Anyway, just one look at that meat had me salivating like a wild man. I took a few bites and realized this meat tasted as good as it looked. Two of the meat sticks had some subtle sweet soy saucy flavor and the other stick had some wasabi action on top. Anyway, I polished off that first beer, so I figured I'd try out a new beer. I figured I'd try out the Red Rose Amber Ale. So I ordered myself a new beer. The beer maestro brought it out, and I gotta say, it's looking pretty nice. I enjoyed the view of this nice amber hue. I started drinking this beer with a frenzied enthusiasm, and it did not disappoint. It seemed to me like a party of flavors was popping off on my palate. I tasted some subtle caramel, some wild maltiness, and some plum-like fruitiness. It was almost as though that beer had penetrated the depths of my soul and in some strange way reminded me that I was still alive. Key takeaway is, that's a nice fucking beer right there. I might even go as far as to say as I like it better than the Rising Sun Pale Ale. It's just that fucking good. I gotta say, it's pretty rare for me to be really impressed by Japanese beer, but so far this place has been hitting home runs, baby. So I polished off that amber ale and figured I'd try out one more beer. Just one more. Now personally, I'm a big fan of wheat beer, so I figured I'd go for the Wheat King Wit. So I ordered up that beer and it looked nice, smelled nice, and by all counts it was gonna be nice, but when I took a sip of that beer, I must say I was a tad disappointed. I mean, don't get me wrong, the beer did taste good, but as wheat beers go, it was nothing worth writing home about, let's just put it that way. 
So after I finished off this beer, we wrapped up our drinking session and overall I had two stellar beers and one unexceptional beer. My heart felt all confused. I couldn't quite tell how to rank this beer place and I had a hankering to try a few more beers. Lucky for me, once my G found out that I had gone to Bard Beer, she said she wanted a piece of that action. So later that week, I met up with my G and we cruised on back to the beer place. I was in the mood for a dark beer, so I ordered myself a Shimaguni Stout. So that bad boy arrived, and as you can see, it's got a pretty big fucking head on it. We also ordered up some edamame that had been marinated in the Shimaguni Stout. In other words, we've got some soybean pods infused with the flavor of beer. That's some revolutionary shit, if you ask me. So I took that soybean pod, put it between my teeth, and bit down until that soybean went shooting out into my mouth. And holy shit, that was some life-changing edamame right there. Might even be the best I've ever had. The savory taste of that beer mixed with the fresh taste of that soybean is just what the doctor ordered, baby. Now as far as the beer itself was concerned, it was good, but it was not life-changing. I mean, all in all, it was okay, but it didn't quite get me going and didn't quite get me aroused. Anyway, for my final beer at this place, I figured I'd go for the Angry Boy Brown Ale. So the beer maestro brought this beer out, it had a pretty dark hue, and I was getting excited to try it out. So I lifted that beer to the light and slammed it down the hatch. And wow, just fucking wow, the second that drink slammed down my throat, I knew I had something special on my hands. This drink had a sweet malty flavor with a toffee-esque taste. It improved my life, although I can't say exactly how. Bottom line is, I think this might just be my favorite beer in the whole place. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about Baird Beer. If you like beer and you happen to be in Tokyo, then I highly recommend you check this place out. So what do you think? Where should I eat next? Personally, I have a wild desire to eat some sushi, so I narrowed down the choices to two sushi places. The first choice is Genki Sushi. It's very famous among foreign travelers, and every time I've seen it, it's had a huge-ass line going out. People are usually hanging around all outside the place like hunger-crazed beasts. Apparently the place is famous for its touchscreen ordering system that shoots out food along a conveyor belt directly in front of your face. Sounds pretty enticing to me. Now choice number two is Uobe Sushi. Now apparently this restaurant is part of the same company as Genki Sushi, but the menu here seems to have a bit of a wilder side to it. I mean, what do we got here? We got some fermented soybeans on sushi. That's pretty normal, but kimchi? What's next? We got some cheese-filled ham katsu on sushi, and we got some grilled pork popping off. Seems like a buck-wild menu, if you ask me. Anyway, those are your choices, so feel fucking free to vote on my next chow destination. And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.